Hi, book, book two. Welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie, and this time for once, I am going to actually participate in Jane Austen July. I have kept, I have talked about it every year, or at least thought about it. Um, but I've always felt like I didn't have enough material for the for a whole month. So, which granted, the host have said as long as you're reading a Jane Austen work, then you're participating. But I want to do more than just read one Jane Austen novel. Now, I wish I had more adaptations, but I only have two adaptations um, for this. But at least I have something. So, um, let me call up, let me move this screen on my screen. Okay, move that. And let me... Oh, oh, I'm... Sorry, I think I disappeared for a minute there. But, um, so this is hosted by, um, Katie from Books and Things, and Claudia from Spinster's Library, and then there's one more person, um, Blatantly Bookish, I think her channel name is, um, they host, they've host, been hosting it for five years now. And except for Claudia, Claudia, I'm guessing she started joined in the second year of the um, of the readathon because she has said she had been participating, hosted for only four, only four years. So um, this, of course, has challenges. But like I said, they they say that you can read at least one Jane Austen book and you're good. You're participating. Um. And I think that's for any readathon where they have a certain like an author as the theme or a type of book as a theme. As long as you're reading one book with that theme, then they consider you a participant. Okay, so I'm gonna read off the challenges. Okay, so first we have, um, of course, read one of her six main novels. And um, and also you need to read. Something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main novels, like her Juvenalia or um, Lady Susan is not a novel. It's a Piscopalary work. Um, so you could read that one, which I do have access to that one, but it's in that big Barnes and Noble omnibus with all of her works, including Lady, and obviously includes Lady Susan. So I could I could technically read it, but it's kind of hard to read because it's so big and this print is so small. It's just this big obnoxious book that's beautiful to look at. It's great to have on your shelf as far as aesthetics, but it's not comfortable to read. So so I could so I have access to it, but I probably won't. Um, and I actually didn't have for a while. I did have the movie adaptation of it, but it was one I was buying for my aunt, and I ended up giving it back to her. Um, but I did like it. It was a fun movie. Um, although I should also tell you that it's called Love and Friendship, but Love and Friendship is actually the name of one of Jane Austen's Juvenalia works. So that I thought was kind of weird. Okay, and then we have, so we read a nonfiction work, um, sorry, the, the typography I chose is can be hard to read sometimes um about Jane Austen on her time on her, that's prop number three or challenge number three um number four is read a retelling of Jane Austen um of a retelling of a Jane Austen um book or not work book or work I mean, book or a work of historical fiction during Jane Austen's time. That's problem number four. Number five is reading a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. So anything that was written in um, between the years 1775 and 1817, which I was trying to find, um, see if any of the classics I have were written there. Like, you know, if I could read a Dickens novel, one of the Dickens novels I haven't read. Um, there, there are a couple that I could potentially, I might be able to count, but I don't know yet. I have to look at them. So I don't have any of those to show you. 
Okay, prompt number six is a work. Um, watch or no, watch a um direct um a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book, and watch a modern adaptation retelling of Jane of Jane Austen. Okay, so first, um. I'm going to read, I have two options for a, one of Jane Austen's original work, and one of them is about to fall. So first, I'm going to, there is the group read, one of the group reads, there's two group reads, there's Lady Susan is one of them, is one of the group reads, and, um, and they're also, but they're first going to read Pride and Prejudice, the first couple weeks of the month. Um, I have read the I read this years ago, and of course I've seen the adaptation, of the two thousand five adaptation quite a few times, and then, um, Bride and Prejudice I think it's called the Indian adaptation of it, which is really good. I I enjoyed I enjoyed that one when I watched that one. Um, I think it's the same people who um did the movie Bend It Like Beckham. Actually. Or maybe, like, one of the actresses from Bend It Like Beckham is in Bride and Prejudice. I don't know, but there's some connection there. <laughs> but I really, I did really like that. Um, but I've only read the book once, I believe. Once or twice. So I thought I would go ahead and participate in this read-along. But, like I said, maybe not the Lady Susan read-along. Um, so I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this one is about out if you're a Jane Austen fan. Um, and then I also was going to go ahead and read um, Northanger Abbey as the one, as a Jane Austen book that I have not read yet. And this is kind of a, her take on gothic literature. We have our main character, um, Catherine, and she loves gothic literature and I believe she goes to live with this family in Bath to stay with this, these family friends um, and the place being Northanger Abbey, and then I believe she thinks she's come across a, um, plot that's like a gothic novel. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a satire, and, um, it is a satire, and it's kind of, like I said, it makes none of the gothic novel, gothic literature. Um, and I think, I've already said this before, that I have debated about reading this for Jane Austen in July, or just saving it for October, but I decided to Go ahead and read it for Jane Austen July. And then maybe I can um, read it again for October. Because it's the only com the only of her six main novels that I have not read yet. I think. Um, and like I said, I have not read Lady Susan, but that's not a novel. So that's a Episcopal Terry work. So I still cannot say that word. <laughs> so I'm going to read those two. And then let's see. We have... Um, reading something by Jane, uh, um, something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main works. I don't have that. If I did, um, want to, I could read Lady Susan. I technically could read Lady Susan for that prompt. And then is the other, um, the other read-along book. But I'm not going, I'm probably not going to. Okay, so next, read a non-fiction work about Jane Austen. On her dirt or her time, and I have two options for this as well. Um, so we have. Oh, okay. So I don't have. Um, I thought I had the Lucy one of Lucy Worsley's Worsley's books, but I don't. Um, so for, we have the real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things. Now I don't remember who recommended this, but one of the booktubers I watch recommended this book, so I put it on my Amazon wish list. I got it last Christmas. I believe from Terry. Um, and so I thought, so I think that would be, it's, so I decided to save it for Jane Austen July. Um, that shapes interior, okay. A claim biographer Paula Byrne explores the forces that shape the interior life of one of the most beloved novels in English, in the English language. Her father's religious faith, her mother's aristocratic pedigree, her eldest brother's adoption, her relatives in the East and West Indies, and the family's amateur theatricals, and her determination throughout her long struggle to become a published author, the woman who emerges far tougher, more socially and politically aware, and although altogether more modern than the conventional picture. 
Like a superb archaeologist, Byrne uses artifacts from Jane Austen's life to craft a vivid, more complex portrait of a right of the writer than we have ever seen. So, I'm going to read this for nonfiction, and then I have another nonfiction here, which it might apply. Let me see. I need to look at the prompts again. Read. Um. Okay, no, so it's not a separate prompt. So, um, the other nonfiction is something written by Jane Austen herself. Her Life in Letters. Um, by William Austen Lee and Richard Arthur Austen Lee. And this is actually one I found at the roast office, I believe. Um, see, in the roast office or the, um, Black Castle books. And, um, as the title says, it's her life in letters. So, um, oh yeah, yeah, I think it was, I saw it at Black Castle Books. Because it has, this is their, this is what they use for price tags. Um, so it's basically her life in letters. Her, um, at almost 100 years after the death of Jane Austen, William Austen Lee and Richard A Arthur Austen Lee published Jane Austen, her life in letters, a family record. The book lovingly details Jane's birth, childhood, adolescence, and maturity in the everyday minuet of her life, the circumstances in which she wrote her juvenilia in her six novels and her early death. Using Jane Austen's own letters, additional letters sent between a large and fond family and family reminiscence, William and Richard Austen continue the family tradition of carefully nurturing the reputation of a literary icon who also happened to be the most beloved aunt. So I wonder if this is one where people have said it's, they feel like it's a little, a little biased and sugarcoats things a little bit, or like, like Jane Austen, you know, was a very a private person, so they didn't really, um, so she was very careful and her family preserved her identity, very much preserved her reputation. Um, not wanting to see her in a, more, in a negative, not wanting her portrayed in a more negative light. Oh. Ooh. So, this one, um, has a, has a sticker of the original owner in it. Or, the owner's name. Um, so that's one. So yeah, I'm gonna read, those are the two nonfiction. And then we have, um, read a retelling of a Jane Austen work, I mean Jane Austen book, or work of historical fiction in Jane Austen's time. So like I said, I was trying to find, see if I had any, um, oh, oh wait, that's the next one. Um, never mind. Okay, what I was about to mention, remind you guys that I was talking about earlier, I does not apply to this prompt. It applies to the next one. But this one, like I said, read a retelling. And I'm choosing the other Bennett sister. A novel by Janice Hadlow. Um, I also would love to get um, the book about Charlotte Lucas, but I don't. But whenever I type in the title, I have a hard time finding it because there's a lot of books with Charlotte in the title. But, um, this is about the bed, one bed sister that we don't really, that doesn't have a strong personality. Or at least she's much more reserved and quiet. Um, and as Mary Bennett, this is her story told her in her perspective on the whole, on the events of Pride and Prejudice. And I was so happy to see this at the roast office. So I definitely, even though I normally... Um, try not to, I've recently started avoiding getting hardback books. I had to get this because I was eager to read it and it's going to be a while before it comes out on paperback. So, um, I'm very excited to read this because also I feel like I could probably relate a lot the most to Mary Bennett as far as personality. Like in these kind of stories where they're sisters, I feel like there's always the sister that I would love to be. Um, that, there was a time I would love to, I, I want to be that sister. And then there's the sister that I actually am that I'm not critical. And now when I say that, I'm not saying that in a negative, I don't mean it as in, 
I'm ashamed to be like them. It's more, I mean, I can relate. There's the one that I can relate more to, and there's the one that's I want to emulate a little bit more. Um, and that's in this case, Mary is the one I'm probably the most like. But I think I'm not the only I think most people love to be Elizabeth Bennett. Unless you already are the Elizabeth Bennett of your family. Um, okay, so that was the retelling. A retelling. And then we have... Read a contemporary of Jane Austen's time. I published between 1775 and 1817. So, um... I would love to find a book that could apply to this prompt, but I don't know if I have. I'll have to look at my shelf. Um. Oh, I forgot. I also, oh, I forgot. Another Jane Austen I wanted to reread was Mansfield Park. Because I've been wanting to reread it for a while. Um. So that's three of Austen's novels I want to read. One that I have not read and two that I'm rereading. So, this was what I wanted, I have been wanting to reread, and haven't got to yet, so I decided to go ahead and put it in Jane Austen July for now, but I don't know if I'll get to it or not. Like I said, my priorities are going to be Pride and Prejudice and um, Northanger Abbey, but I would like to try to get to this one as well. So, I'm sorry, that's another Jane Austen one of her six main novels that I would like to read. Okay, so... Um, we have the last two prompts are talking about, you know, adaptations. So, um, watch a, a direct screening adaptation of Jane Austen, of a Jane Austen book. Now, I don't have the 1995 one, but I have the 2005 adaptation with Karen Knightley and Matthew McFadden. Um, I'm really liking it. Um, although I recently heard that... Apparently, the ending of the U.S. edition, U.S. U.S. copy of the movie, is not the same as the one everywhere else. Like, ever, most people seem to have the ending that doesn't end with them being all cute and stuff. Sonya's, um, they just end with her father being like, you know, her talking to her father and him, you know, is like, oh, I thought you didn't like him. And she's like... Oh, we, you know, I was wrong. I've, I'm, made a, I made a mistake and stuff like that. Um, but I personally, and maybe this is just the American in me, but I like the ending. I like cute, sweet endings, and they're the main couple. So I'm like, I want to see them having their happiness. And I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting that, uh, liking that ending. I mean, sometimes I, some of the comments on the venue where they talked about that made me feel a little judged for liking that ending. That, you know, I mean, everyone's entitled their opinion, but it was a little like, what's wrong with the ending? It's cute. You know, it may not be true to the book, but it's still a cute ending. And yes, we Americans like the, you know, the rom-com-esque endings. Nothing's wrong, you know. But, um, yeah, so I'll watch this. This is the, because this is the only one I got. <laughs> Although I didn't ask for the 2009 and Emma miniseries, I've seen parts of the um, the most recent adaptation of Emma. Um, now I do have a preference for some of the actors in the new in the that 2009 adaptation, and I did like what I saw of the 2020 adaptation, and I need to watch it again, but I don't have access to it. So, and then the last prompt is. Watch a modern adaptation and retelling of a Jane Austen work. And the only one I have is Clueless, which is a modern adaptation of Emma. So it pretty much it's um, follows it follows the story of um of Cher. Cher Horwitz. Her dad is a rich lawyer and she is a California girl, Valley girl. And, um, it basically follows the story of Emma, but set in California. And 
all about now and obviously there are going to be some differences with characters and stuff because they can include everybody um and it's really cute it's a staple for the 90s in my opinion um and even I love the fashion in this, you know. I'm not a big fashionista kind of person. Although I've gotten more into fashion as I've gotten older. Um, but the fashion is just to die for in this movie. It's, I mean, it is very 90s, but still fun. And I, you know, her computer that she uses to match her outfits to pick out her clothes is really cool. I mean, I love, I love that. I would have loved to have something like that, but we're not rich enough. To have something like that. But it would just be kind of cool. Because I always feel like I'm never really. I can't. Things that I think match. I show them to my mom. And she's like no. It does not match. And it's too contrast to each other. So I would love to have something like that. You know something to tell me. If, instead of having to go ask someone. If these clothes match. But um, yeah it's cute. It's a cute adaptation. So as of right now that is my TBR. But there might be some more books included in that TBR. As well, some books that are inspired, or maybe just another classic that I want to get to, even if it has no no connection to the Jane Austen July readathon, but it's something I want to read. And I still kind of wanted to stick to the, my theme of water and fire for the summer. So you know, there might be some other books um, I want to look into that have nothing to do with Jane Austen, but are you know have to do with my other theme but yes this is so i am excited to participate and like i said i'm glad i remembered because you know i'm glad that, um that i remembered because a lot of times i talk about participating in some readathon and then i forget to do it and i've already thought about other books that i want to read and then it's like you know a little overwhelming for me and just I try to squeeze in whatever thing, you know, whenever we thought I want to do it, it never works out. So, I am a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, so if you guys are participating in Jane Austen July, please tell me, let me know, and let me know what you're going to read for Jane Austen July. It's a really fun readathon. If you're, you know, a fan of Jane Austen, it will be an excuse to spend a whole month with her works, or works inspired by her. Um... Like, like the Bridgerton series, for example, is great. I mean, I have not read the books, but I'm more interested in the TV show. And I could always watch the show again. You know? Although it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really count for a prompt. Because it's not um, a retelling of Jane Austen. But anyway, um, so if you guys like this video, be sure to give a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification below if you want to be notified when I post new videos. And, um, and I will hope you are staying happy, happy, healthy, and safe and enjoying your reading. Bye.